This is part 102 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss why we need multiple authorization handlers for a given requirement. We implement multiple handlers for a single requirement when we want the requirement evaluation to be on an OR basis. Let's understand this with an example. A requirement can have one or more handlers. Our requirement is manage admin roles and claims requirement. We already implemented a class that represents this requirement in our previous video in the series. Now, if we take a look at the security folder, notice our requirement class is right here, manage admin roles and claims requirement. And the class implements the built-in I authorization requirement interface. And we already have a handler that handles this requirement and that handler is present in this file can edit only other admin roles and claims handler and for this handler to successfully evaluate this requirement this condition right here must be met so the logged in user must be in the admin role and has claim type edit role and the logged in user id must not be equal to the id of the admin user being edited now we need another handler this handler checks a different condition to evaluate this requirement. So for a logged in user to manage admin roles and claims, either this condition must be met or this condition. There is an or relationship. So we create a second handler. So if either this handler or this handler successfully evaluates the requirement, we want the policy to succeed and allow access. So let's implement this second handler now. To the security folder, let's add a new class file. I'm going to name this super admin handler. Now, if you're wondering why we named it that way, well, that's because the second handler is going to check if the logged in user is in the super admin role to evaluate this requirement and allow access. So let's click add to add this file. An authorization handler must inherit from authorization handler of T, where T is the type of requirement. So if we take a look at our first handler, which we implemented in our previous video, notice this handler inherits from authorization handler of our requirement. So let's do the same with our second handler as well. Bring in the required namespace and then provide implementation for handle requirement async method. Notice when I type override and space, we see all the methods that we can override. We want to override handle requirement async method. The implementation of this handler is pretty straightforward. All we need to check is if the logged in user is in the super admin role. So for that, we're going to make use of this incoming authorization handler context parameter. So if context dot user dot is in role and the role that we want to check for is super admin. If the user is in the super admin role, we want the requirement evaluation to succeed. So on the incoming context parameter, we call succeed method and pass it the requirement. Finally, let's return task.completed task. With the second handler in place, let's run our project in debug mode and see if it works as expected. Notice I'm already logged in as super admin. Now let's navigate to list users page and then edit this user prajim at prajimtech.com. Now when I click manage roles button, I should be allowed access because I am in the super admin role. But notice we see access denied view. Why is that? Well, to understand what's going on, let's include a breakpoint in both of the authorization handlers. Here is our second handler, super admin handler, and our first handler is right here. And then let's go back to the users page, click edit, and then manage roles. Notice our breakpoint in the first handler is hit. If you remember, we are logged in as a super admin. So this first handler is not going to successfully evaluate the requirement. Why is that? Well, that's because the logged in user is not in the admin role and he does not have this edit role claim type. The logged in user is in the super admin role. So now when I click continue, this breakpoint in the second handler must be hit. So let's click continue and see if that happens. 
That's a bit odd. This breakpoint in our second handler is not hit at all. Why is that? Well, we'll get back to that in just a bit. But before that, let's understand why we are seeing this access denied view. Well, that's because at the moment, this is the only handler that got executed and the logged in user is not in the admin role and he does not have editorial claim type. So this requirement is not evaluated successfully. Hence, the policy is not fulfilled and we are not allowed access. Now, why? Our second authorization handler did not execute at all? Well, that's because we have forgot one of the very important steps and that is registering the handler. We do that in the configure services method of the startup class. Notice we only have registered the first handler. We forgot to register our second handler. So let's stop debugging. Make a copy of this line and then change the type of the handler. Our second handler is super admin handler and then let's run our project in debug mode one more time we are still logged in as super admin now let's navigate to list users page click edit and manage roles our breakpoint in the first handler is hit let's continue the execution the breakpoint in our second handler is also hit now let's step through the code Notice it comes inside the if block because the logged in user is in the super admin role and the requirement is successfully evaluated. So the policy is fulfilled. At this point, if we continue the execution, we should be allowed access. There we go. Now let's go back to the list users page. If we log in with this username, prajim at prajimtech.com, we should still be allowed access because this user is in the admin role and he also has edit role claim type with a value of true. So this first handler will evaluate the requirement successfully. Let's go back to the list users page. If we log in with this username, test at prajimtech.com, we should not be allowed access because this user is not either in the admin role or super admin role. So none of these handlers will be able to successfully evaluate the requirement. So let's log out and log back in with test at prajimtech.com. We are logged in. Let's navigate to the list users page. Click edit on one of the users and then manage roles. Notice, as expected, we are denied access. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.